Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about what you should do as a returning player, because I have realized a lot of my friends haven't played the game since the Stia days, and they're finally coming back to NGS after taking like a one year break. And they're like, oh my goodness, there's so many new resources. There's so much new gear. What are EX augments? And there's plenty of new stuff to go over. So today's video is dedicated for you guys so that you guys know what is the gold standard or what you guys should be aiming for in order to carry your own weight in all of these new different type of games modes. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. Now, since I know the majority of you guys are incredibly impatient, I'm going to give you the TLDR right at the very beginning. First of all, because we have the seasonal event, you're going to pick up three of these Aina armors from the seasonal shop. Now, the reason why you want to pick these armors up specifically is because they are already limit broken all the way to level 90. This is going to save you a metric butt ton of Meseta as well as other resources as you will not need to limit break any of your armors. So you can simply just enhance it all the way up to around 81 is what I would recommend. However, if you have the resources to get it all the way to plus 90, that is even better as it will increase your survivability because it gives you a lot more defense. But the minimum you want to aim for is 81, simply because after you enhance your armors to level 81, you will unlock all seven augment slots, which is a very big deal. You definitely want to unlock all seven augment slots as it increases your damage significantly, simply because you get an additional augment. So that's what you're going to be doing with your armors. Fairly simple. Now, as for your weapon, I know a lot of people will be like, Kara, why don't we go with the Wingard weapon? Well, Wingard weapons, unfortunately, are still incredibly rare, even though they have been out for several months already. So I would recommend people to go with the next best weapon, which is, of course, the Iridium weapons. Now, these weapons, by default, will always come with three EX augments. This is one of the main reasons why you want to pick up one of these weapons. First of all, it's already enhanced to plus 60 by default but you are going to need to limit break it in order to get it all the way to level 90. And it's incredibly important that you enhance your weapon all the way to plus 90 because it increases your attack power significantly. So it's very, very important that you do that. As for your augments, it's going to be fairly simple. The reason is because you already have three EX augments on your weapon. The majority of all of these EX augments give you 4.5% potency. Some of them give you a little bit more at 5.5%. However, there are conditions to that. So personally, as you are first starting out, just aim for any random weapon, as long as it's the weapon that your class can use or the class that you're maining as. Just focus on getting any Iridium weapon with any of the EX augments. It doesn't really matter what the EX augments to begin with, all right, because you can always switch out your EX augments later down the line. However, if you want one with a high fixa and if you are deciding to main an Iridium weapon, you could always check the player shop as the player shop does have a lot of these Iridium weapons for very, very cheap. The reason why it's so cheap is because when you go to the Nameless City Exploration, Iridium weapons literally drop like candy. You are going to get a bajillion of these weapons simply by running the Nameless City Exploration. So if you are low on Masetta or you'd rather just farm everything for yourself, just go to the Nameless City, literally farm there for like an hour, and I guarantee you, you will get a weapon that you can use. All right, now that you have an Iridium weapon as well as the three of your armors, now it is time to enhance all of them as well as limit breaking. So I'm going to show you how much it costs to limit break because it is a little bit expensive. I would recommend people to wait till next week or right after the maintenance before you do any upgrades as we are getting a boost to all of your upgrades as well as some Meseta discounts. So if you can wait a couple days because maintenance is literally in two days at the time of this video coming out, just wait for that and then invest all of your money into augmenting it's going to save you a lot of headache but if you can't wait you know it's not the end of the world so as we can see over here limit break you're going to highlight your iridium weapon and you're going to see it's going to cost eight arms refiners as well as four arms refiners too this is not that big of a deal you can actually get a lot of these from the genesis point shop so if you don't have any you can just use genesis points to buy these however it's the meseta cost that really hurts as you can see here it costs 230,000 meseta now if you wait until the campaign boost next week, it's going to be 50% off. So it's definitely going to save you a lot of Meseta. However, for the sake of this video, 
I am going to be spending all of this money just to show you guys how it's done. So the 230,000 meseta that I just spent just limit broke the weapon to plus 70. Now I need to do it to get it to plus 80. So that's another 230,000 as well as 20 arms refiners and 10 arms refiners too. So we're going to do that again in order to get it to plus 80. And we need to do it one more time in order to get it to plus 90. Now it's going to cost exactly the same amount of meseta. However, doing that three times already, that's like 700,000 meseta. So remember our armors? We don't need to do that because we bought the armors from the seasonal shop that are already limit broken to level 90. So essentially by getting the Aina armors from the seasonal shop, you're saving 2.1 million meseta, which is a really big deal. However, we are not done yet. We need to go to item enhancement now. And now we actually need to enhance all of these weapons and armors all the way to plus 90. Now, in order to enhance your weapon all the way to plus 90, I highly recommend that you make Golden Prim Sword 2s and enhance them to plus 80. You can buy these gold Prim Source 2 again from the seasonal shop. I'll link in the description below a video on how I managed to make all of these the most cost efficient way in order to do these. Now you do need to wait for next week in order to utilize that method as you will need a great success rate of 100% which just so happens to happen next week. So next week's going to be the best time to do all of these upgrades. All right, just bookmark this video so that you have it like saved somewhere. That way after the maintenance, you'll be able to max out all of your gear at a fraction of the cost. Cost. And the reason why you want these Golden Prim Swords 2 at plus 80 is because look at that. One Golden Prim Sword at plus 80 boosts it to 68. However, something that they didn't count over here is the 100% success rate. At 100% success rate, it boosts it from 60 to 77. That is just one Golden Prim Sword 2. We're going to use two over here. And again, we use the 100% success rate immediately maxes it out from a plus 60 weapon all the way to a plus 90 weapon immediately gives you the maximum amount of damage of 1,153 attack, gives you your seven augment slots, and more importantly, it saves you a ton of meseta because the more items you feed into a weapon or an armor, the more expensive it's going to cost meseta wise because I'm only feeding two items. It's only going to cost me 11,400 meseta. Now I'm going to do this again for the sake of science, but please, please, please wait until next week to do all of this when we get that campaign boost or wait until the maintenance. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with our Aina armors. Unfortunately, I do not have any armor fodder prepared because, uh, well, I use them all. So we're going to do the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way is going to cost significantly more meseta as you are literally just going to be feeding Endemios over here. So these are the new Endemio capsules. You can turn all of your Golden Prim Swords 2 as well as Golden Prim Armors 2 into Endemio capsules, which gives you 100,000 enhancement EXP. So you feed five of them, that's 500,000 EXP. And you can see it enhances it a little bit from 60 to like halfway to 61. But this is the kicker. It's going to cost you so much meseta. It costs you 26,000 meseta just to do this once. And that's not even to level 61 yet. And you need to do this all the way until level 90 or at least 81 in order to unlock all seven augment slots. So this is going to be a pain in the butt and it's really, really going to hurt your meseta. All right, we're almost there. We're almost getting this to plus 81. Thank goodness. I, oh my God, this is taking so long. Now, if you wait till next week, you won't need to use any 20% boosters like what I'm doing over here because every enhancement that you do will be a great success, unlike me being dumb and doing this now. But as you can see, we finally got all of our armors to plus 81, which means that we get an additional two augment slots or a total of seven augment slots. So now that we finally got our weapon to plus 90, as well as our three armors to plus 81, the next thing is, of course, to add the augments. So we're going to go to add augments over here. We'll do our weapon first because this one's relatively straightforward. And the first thing that we are going to look up are going to be our LC capsules. So there are a ton of LC capsules to choose from. Simply just sort by LC if you have material storage. Or if you don't have material storage, it's going to be somewhere in your all storage. And you can just search by LC and you'll find all of the different LC capsules. Now, I recommend putting Gladius Soul LC, Gigas Master LC, and Hal Finale LC. 
These are probably going to be your top picks. And then after you pick these three LC capsules, the last choice is really up to you. If you want to be a little bit more tankier, you can go with Grand Dread Keeper LC. However, if you just care about damage, you can go with the High Kavaris Domina LC or any of the Domina LCs as they all give you 2.75% potency. So we're just going to go with the High Kavaris Domina LC. Now, the reason why we pick these LC capsules is because they are super easy to obtain. There are a ton of shops that you can exchange for LC capsules. And if you just run the limited time quest, you get a ton of these. All right, so we're going to pick these four augments. As you can see, they are all 100% success rate because we put 10 capsules each. Click confirm, and then we just place them in. As we can see right here, we now have our three EX augments as well as our four LC capsules. And we're going to do start a fixed augment. We don't need any boosters because it's a 100% success rate and it's all done. So there we go, our weapon is fully completed. The weapon itself gives us 30% all potency, and it also gives us 55 HP as well as 20 PP. It's a very solid weapon. However, we are not done with our weapon yet as we do need to unlock its weapon potential. So again, we come to the item lab, unlock potential, and we need to unlock this all the way to level 6 as it does give you a ton of potency as well as critical hit rate, PP consumption reduction, as well as photon blast gauge charge when attacking. Now the downside here is again, it's going to eat into your Meseta like crazy. This is only for level 1, it's already eating 100,000 Meseta as well as all of these minerals. Now the minerals aren't that big of a deal, you can just collect this in the open world as well as just run limited time quests and stuff like that. So you shouldn't be hurting too badly for the minerals, but uh, the Meseta is going to hurt so badly because look, we're going to do this one time over here, so this is just to unlock level 1. That's 100,000 down the drain. Now, in order to get to level 2, it costs 200,000. So that's 300,000 Meseta down the drain. Now, we got to do it again. That's 600,000 Meseta now. And now, to get it to level 4, it costs 400,000 Meseta. That's a million Meseta. And we're not even done yet. Then, we got to do it again. That's 1.4 million Meseta now. And now, we got to do it one more time to get it to level 6. Jesus Christ, that's 1.9 million Meseta just to get to level 6, all right? So it maxes out at level 6. It does make a very big difference, you know, as you do get plus 38% potency, which is a very big deal. But we're talking about 1.9 million Meseta just to get it to level 6. It's very important that you do get it to level 6 as it does impact your damage significantly. But just understand that it's going to cost you a arm and a leg. But if you wait till next week, it's 50% off. So it's only going to cost you a million Meseta instead of what I just paid, which is basically 2 million Meseta. Yeah, I'm dumb. All right, next up is going to be our armors. We're simply going to augment our armors. Again, we go to material storage, sort by LC capsules. So this time we want to pick anything that is above 3% potency. So the first one is going to be our Gladius Soul LC. The second one is going to be our Gigas Master LC. And the third one is going to be our Hal Finale LC. These three LC capsules are pretty much our go-to for now. And then over here, again, you can either pick whether you want a Domina LC or Grand Dread Keeper or even both. So in our case, maybe we'll pick both, all right? Then we're going to go confirm over here. So as we can see here, the first choice is going to be Mastery 4. Mastery 4 gives us 2.5% potency. It's not the greatest, so we're going to untick that for now. As for Aegis Soul 4, this only gives us 3% potency. We want to replace that with Gladia Soul LC because this one gives us 3.5%. 5% potency is better in every single way. It gives us more HP, more PP, just more everything. Triple Bull 2 gives us 3% damage. It's not bad. So we're going to keep it here for now. As for Stia Domina over here, we're going to be replacing this with High Kavaris Domina LC. Now keep in mind, I am sacrificing some damage as Stia Domina does give me 3% potency, but it gives me damage resistance minus 2%. I personally don't really like squishy builds or just any negative stats in general. So I prefer High Kavaris Domina simply because even though I sacrifice 0.25% potency, I do gain 6% pp and i also gained the potency floor increase by 2.5 percent but this is really dependent on how you want to build your class if you only care about damage then you don't need the high kavars domina lc or just any domina lc and you can stick with the stia domina instead the next one is going to be the Ultra Kreta 4. Personally, I'm not a fan of this one, even though it gives me 2.5% potency, but I do lose 10 HP and I also lose damage resistance by 1.5%. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that, so I'm going to take that away. So we're going to replace that with Gigas Masse LC, Grand Drag Keeper LC, Hal Finale LC. 
And now we still have one more slot over here. So we actually have a choice whether we want Mastery 4 or Alt Secreta 4. Personally, I would pick Mastery 4 simply because, well, Mastery 4 gives you the same amount of potency, but it's all positive stats versus Alt Secreta, well, you lose stats and you gain zero extra potency. So obviously we pick Mastery 4. And there we go. These are going to be the augments that we use. And we're going to start a fixed augment. Again, everything's 100%, so zero gambling involved. So we're just going to click yes and wabam, completed. And just like that, this armor now gives us 29.7% all potency, 90 HP, as well as 22 PP. Very balanced armor. Very, very nice. Now we just got to do the same thing with the other two armors. So I'll be right back once I'm done with that. And there we go. We now have 4,111 battle power. Our HP is a little bit on the low side at 930. We have 206 photon points. We have 10% damage resistance, almost 11% actually. And our damage adjustment is 73%. And our total potency is 183.9%. This is a great starting point. Now we are going to be trying to aim for 200% potency. That is what most people should try to aim for, but this is a very good starting point. You'll be able to do all of the content available in the game right now, other than Sign of the Planet Breaker rank 2, as this does require 4,200 battle power, but this is like super endgame stuff anyway, and you don't really get that many rewards for completing it anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But as for all the other content, like limited time quest, you'll be able to get in here easily. You know, only 3,749, we're at 4,111. You're going to have a very easy time breezing through the limited time quest. You know, if you want to go to Nameless City, you'll be able to access this as well 3960 battle power you can go in super super easy there's just basically everything is going to be super accessible and super easy and you'll be able to blast through everything and this is essentially your starting point so that you can start farming for Masetta in order to increase your wealth so that you can buy any fashion pieces you want or just simply start gearing up your character and get them stronger and stronger because this is pretty much the baseline we're using an iridium rod over here with three ex augments as well as four lc augments we're using the free armors that we got from the seasonal shop that we enhanced to plus 81 and we just placed five lc augments while retaining two of the augments right here now it's incredibly easy to increase your potency even further all you need to do is replace your triple two or your mastery four with a mega trial capsule which gives you 3.5 percent potency so that's 0.5 percent potency better but again remember potency is multiplicative so even though this extra 0.5 on three of your armors doesn't seem like much oh you know you might think it's just 1.5 percent potency but because it's multiplicative and since our potency is getting really high in the number scale it's actually going to boost you significantly it's going to boost you by like five percent actually which is definitely going to help you get closer to that 200 percent potency which is going to be what most people are going to be aiming for now for my friends who are wondering how do i get even stronger how do i make all of these high-end capsules you go to the exchange enhancement materials over here and augment capsule these are all of the high-end capsules, so Grand Gladius Soul. What you're going to need is you're going to need to do a dual quest over here. You're going to need regular Gladius Souls as well as Foundia Capsules. Next up is the Mega Trial, the capsule that I just talked about. What you need to do is you need to get any combination of the regular Trial Capsules. Just so happens that the Seasonal Shop offers these, so you can actually buy these from the Seasonal Shop. But the D-Row Capsule over here, honestly, I don't know if this is still obtainable right now. But in order to get this before, it was when the Crimson Realm was around and you'd farm the crimson realm to get this personally i don't know where to get this capsule anymore maybe through the limited time quest um and maybe through urgent quest maybe i'm not entirely sure so, but if you guys do know let me know in the comment section below and i'll just pin your comment so that people who are interested in farming the mega trials will be able to create them next one is going to be the glen gigas Mastay. this is incredibly powerful this is more powerful than the gigas Mastay, as it has glen in front of it but in order to make this you're going to need the fusia capsule Capsules, which you obtain through dual quest you're going to need foundia capsules as well as gigas Maste. so again foundia capsules you can get this by just running the limited time quest as well as urgent quest there's plenty of ways to get the foundia capsules and of course the exchange shop but the gigas Maste, on the other hand you are going to need to craft these so we scroll down here and you can see gigas Maste. 
So Gigas Mass Day is created by combining all three Gigas Stat 4s and Fusia capsules that you get from Dual Quest in order to create Gigas Mass Day, which is all potency plus 3.5%. These Gigas Might 4, Gigas Precision 4, as well as Gigas Technique 4, this actually only gives you 3% potency, so, you know, it's worth making Gigas Mass Day. Again, you can get this from the Seasonal Shop. And there's a whole list of different high-end capsules over here that you can farm for, so basically just look at what you want to make, for example, Gladius Soul over here, and see what you need. So, oh, we need Star Roll Souls, you get this in PSE Combat Zones. Oh, we need Dual Fusia, so basically anything that ends with Fusia means you need a dual dual quest. And then we need Erati Soul 4. Well, just so happens you get a ton of these in the Nameless City. So you're going to farm Nameless City a ton. You're going to get a ton of these Erati Souls. You're going to farm a ton of PSC Bursts in order to get your Star L Souls. And then you're going to farm a ton of Dual Quests to get your Dual Fusias. And boom, you've got your Gladia Souls. Once you've crafted your Gladia Souls, then you can upgrade those into your Grand Gladia Souls. Again, you're going to need to do a different type of dual quest, plus the regular Gladia Soul, plus the Foundia Capsule. So everything builds on top of each other. The more time you spend farming, the more time you invest in this game, the more better your gear is going to be. And in turn, the better the gear you have, the more efficient you are going to be in farming for even better gear. So this is kind of the wheel or the cycle or the gameplay loop that kind of makes you play the game over and over and over and just makes you do the same thing over and over and over in order to make your character stronger. However, I understand that isn't for everyone. You know, a lot of people are like, Carol, I can't sit here mindlessly grinding for five hours a day. That will burn me out. That's perfectly fine. With this amount of potency, this is the super entry level stuff that i just showed you you know 183.9 percent potency you, it's good enough to farm for all the generic stuff already you do not need to try to achieve the 240 percent potency or 280 percent potency or even 290 percent potency like that is really for the min maxers that is for the end game players that is for the players who have played the game since day one or are really crazy hardcore farmers, all right? So for the average player, you don't need to feel bad about your 180% potency, but you should be striving towards 200. Get 200% potency and you're good for pretty much everything, all right? So that's pretty much the gold standard that you should be aiming for. But if you're happy with your current gear already and you can do all of the content that you want to do very, very easily, then yeah, you don't need to upgrade if you don't want to. It's not the end of the world if you don't want to upgrade. Just understand that there is certain content, for example, Sign of the Planet Breaker Rank 2, that you will not be able to participate in simply because this does require you to upgrade your gear and actually get strong and understand game mechanics so that you can actually clear all of this content, all right? Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.